back here for another match review stream for you guys today. If you are new around here, go to our brand new website, wattv.co.uk. Link is in the description for all your latest Tottenham articles. But um, if you do get a bit of noise interference, there's a bit of works going on outside, taking down the scaffolding after fixing the roof. But after this, it should be. <laughs> they've just done, they've, look, they've just been doing so much cliving, being Tottenham right at the top of the league. That's why. That's why they got to take it down. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Let's hope we don't have to put the scaffolding again to uh, take us off the top of the league. But Spurs are sitting top of the league after a two 0 win against Fulham yesterday at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. And uh, we'll get into the match review first and then get into the player ratings, uh, five takeaways and see how Twitter reacted to the game as well. But in terms of the match review, um, I thought it was a really professional job from Spurs yesterday. Obviously, Hoybier comes in for the injured, for the suspended Basuma, And I thought he did a really stellar job in the middle of the park there, spraying the ball about like uh, he was prime Kevin De Bruyne at times, uh, Pierre, yesterday. And I thought he did a really important job for the team. A lot of fans were worried maybe about Hoybier coming in and, and how are we going to react to Basuma being out of the team. But I thought um, he did a stellar job really um, in the middle of the park. But in terms of the first half, I thought we were much better in the first half than maybe we were in the second half some really good football uh, Richarlison was um, you know central to things yesterday I thought in the first half he was um, he made a real positive impact into the team out on that left hand side um, but I thought maybe second half did we take our foot off the gas a little bit I would say so and I think Ange had that assessment as well I don't think Fulham did anything too much different in that second half I think it was more Tottenham's drop off rather than Fulham improving in the second half which led to a bit of a disjointed performance especially in the last 17 minutes after we made those substitutions um, uh, when we had a lot of changes we definitely looked a bit disjointed but let's concentrate on the first half for the time being I thought we came out of the blocks, I wouldn't say flying, but very controlled. Um, and I thought we were the ones clearly on top and in control of the game. Fulham had that early chance from the corner. João Paulinho gets a header in and it's a brilliant save from Vicario. And he seems every week we're saying, you know, against run of play, he's having to make a save or two, which at crucial times keep, uh, keep us in the game and, and uh, um, stop us from conceding goals. If we go 1-0 down at that stage, it becomes a very different game and a much more difficult affair. So... That was a crucial save, but after that, um, it was only it only did seem a matter of time before Tottenham were going to score. We did uh, open them up a few times. I thought um, Madison plays a lovely through ball to Son, who probably should have done a bit better with his finish, and Leno makes a good save. There was some really beautiful football um, on the left-hand side between Richarlison and Udogi, and it falls to Kulisewski. He could have had a goal. Um, uh, Son as well again um, ha had an, had another opportunity on the edge of the box after some more good work from Madison. Madison was just the hub of everything good everything. Uh, in that first half from Spurs. Every time he got the ball, uh, his creative passing and he seems to have this disguise in his pass as well, which makes it very hard for the opposition to know where he's going to put the ball. And I think it's, that, it's not just that though it's like the anticipation of the pass as well like sometimes he delays it a little bit and it's pinpoint sometimes he just goes for the one one touch and um, really hard passes uh, through the lines and that. literally everything everything good that Spurs do comes from James Madison whether it's, whether it's deep um, kind of in the opposition half towards the halfway line or it's really high up the pitch he is just everywhere at the moment and he spoke about during midweek saying he's in the form of his life and I couldn't agree more I think he's by by far the best player in the Premier League at the moment yeah he's I don't, he just hasn't had a bad game he's literally putting eights and nines out of ten um, every single week which is absolutely amazing to see um it, but yeah, in that first half, it did look like it was a matter of time before we scored, um, albeit... I think Fulham were defending quite well. I think what was the difference was how relentless we were in penning uh, Fulham in in that first half. They couldn't get an out ball. They had a couple of counter-attacks which we dealt with pretty effectively. Romero and Van de Ven pretty much had it on lockdown. But apart from those couple of occasions, it was literally relentless pressure from Tottenham and it told after, after a point. Um, Bassi plays a ball out from the back. Van de Ven comes in with a really good interception, plays it to Richarlison. He gives it to, uh, lays off to a really good pass to Min Son and human son's finish obviously we know he can do that nine day but i think what, what really made the goal is just that little delay on the shot which opened up the space because yeah. you can see that tim ream was so worried about him getting that effort on he had to slide in make the challenge and it, made, it allowed son just to step into the space open it up and give him a clearer effort on goal and bam we know in that position he's going to find the corner more often than not and it was a brilliant goal and we deserved that one nil lead and 
If anything, after that goal, we had a couple of chances as well. Kulusevsky, um had a decent chance after Romero does his best Madison impression with a brilliant through ball. Um, and Kulusevsky, uh kind of muddled that one and went for a pass instead of a shot, which I probably should have done better with. And then we go into halftime 1-0 up. And obviously, it's, it, we're happy with 1-0 up. The only, the only disappointment was in that first half was that it wasn't more than one. Yeah, that was the disappointment for me because with so much dominance in that first half when like you say everything that you say is absolutely spot on you know had them pent in Madison was the magic man throughout Richarlison was impacting the game well Sonny and the Madison link up is there for all to see I was disappointed that we went more than one nil up at half time and I was also disappointed that we didn't come out in the second half maybe the same as we did in the first half uh, do you think that maybe there was a bit of complacency in there from Spurs in the second half I would say more for, well to be fair there was a bit of sloppy passing even before the first even before the second goal so maybe you have a point but we did get that second goal I think the I wouldn't say complacency I would say maybe complacency when we had the ball and I think that's what Ange pointed out as well I think when we had the ball it was just very with lethargic we weren't we weren't it was like we weren't concentrating on building up from the back it was like we were just so hell-bent on getting the ball forward as quickly as possible and we were being so wasteful when we were rushing things or in that first half we were much more patient much more willing to play the ball around and open up the space and it was very peculiar what happened but look we did get that second goal uh, it was uh, and funnily enough the second goal was actually a bit of a carbon copy of the first goal yeah. um, ball comes out from the back again from Fulham this time it's Hoybier making the interception he plays it quickly to Son he lays it into Madison and it's 2-0 at 2-0 as much as we were sloppy and we definitely lost a bit of control of the game, I never really felt like the result was in danger. Again, Vicario had to make a save from Jimenez in that second half, which was a crucial moment. Maybe if the game goes for 2-1, it's a bit of a nervy ending for us, but that was a big save. But apart from those couple of moments, that moment, Fulham didn't really have too much uh, to really hurt us. Wilson maybe had a breakaway where he could have been in on goal, but he took too long to get the shot off and it was blocked. And I think at some point as well, you have to give a bit of credit to our defence. I know Fulham are kind of toothless in the forward line. They proved that again yesterday. In the forward line, they just didn't really offer much. But we defended exemplary, I think, throughout the game. As much as we were wasteful on the ball and we weren't maybe doing the right things uh, in possession, I don't think you, anyone can complain about how we were out possession because I thought we were aggressive we were organized the pressing uh, was good and yeah. the pressing was good uh, as Anne said he, he said for 90 minutes the pressing was good so I think defensively that was where probably we saw out the game and those goals uh, that we scored um, what you were saying about Hoybier and Van der Ven winning the ball back in the middle of the park that is like a hallmark of an Ange Postacoglu team isn't it how many times have we seen it this season Maybe we haven't scored from every time, but we've scored for quite a few of them where we win the ball back in those areas of the pitch and then bang, we're in on goal and we score or we have a good chance. I mean, it's so good to see Spurs being so aggressive in every area of the pitch, um, not just the midfield, but I thought Kuti Romero yesterday put in another stunning display from the back. Um, cool, calm, collective, aggressive when he needed to be getting the ball up the pitch when he needed to. Um, I don't think Kuti put a foot wrong throughout the whole game yesterday and I think um, equal credit maybe just a little bit less goes to Mickey van der Ven as well yesterday um, both of them are striking up such an unbelievable relationship on the football pitch um, I just can't I can't hope I can't wish for any better um, kind of synergies between the two because I think both of them are absolutely unbelievable and Van der Ven could have got on the score sheet again yesterday with that volley in the first half which uh, just went over the bar um and he made a, a couple of really important challenges uh, the other way as well. So I thought both of them. And the amount of times over the past few years we've complained about the defence. It's so refreshing to talk about the defence in this way with the, the two centre-backs and the two full-backs as well, with the Doki and Poro, who I thought all four of them had absolutely stunning games yesterday. Yeah, and I think defensively we were completely on point. And I think, as you say about Van der Ven and Romero, it's just so nice to have a solid not even solid. It seems like an incredible um, centre-back partnership uh, together again for the first time in a long time. And they seem to complement each other so well. Um, they're like the yin to each other's yang in, in, every, in, in a few respects. And uh, I think yesterday, again, Romero... On the ball, as much as off the ball, he was a shining light in the team with his progressive passing. There was one point in the first half where he ran pretty much the whole length of the pitch and then even had the quality to play a through ball to Kulisewski as well and create an opportunity. Van der Ven 
was sweeping up anything that came his way on, on any sort of counter attacks. The amount of times um, Fulham looked like they were going to be in in a dangerous spot, and then Van der Ven comes like a steam train and just clears everything out and uh, wins the ball back. Is and it was uh, absolutely impeccable. Uh, Fulham really struggled to get past them to be honest and the two chances they did create one of them was from a corner and the other one was from a mistake from Kuliseski which uh, uh, led to an opportunity for Jimenez which was saved from Vicario so um, I think in, in general play um, very little uh, they were giving up to this Fulham side and I know Fulham to be fair are probably one of the worst sides at the moment going forward so I don't think it's too much to shout about to keep a clean sheet against them but you have to you can only play what's in front of you and they they did their job exceptionally well and I think that's what uh, probably th third clean sheet or fourth clean sheet this season. Um, uh, we're now second in the league for goals conceded um, in terms of the least goals conceded to Man City. And that's a testament to how well they've adapted together Romero and and um, Romero and Van de Ven in terms of defensively. Because as much as we can talk about Udogi and Porro, and they've also been very good uh, out wide, but it really does come from those two, the, the organisation and the solidity. And, and without those two being playing as well as they have, our defensive record wouldn't be half as good. Yeah, but also uh, what you've got to say about that is the impeccable form of the, or the imperious form of um, Vicario, the goalkeeper. Mm. I mean, how many times has he saved us this season uh, with just unbelievable saves? I mean, that one-handed save yesterday uh, was just unbelievable. And, you know, the nature of how we play, leaving gaps at the back, um, kind of very uh, courageous football, mm -hmm. you're going to get chances uh, that are going to be thrown against you. And for a keeper to come in in his first season in the Premier League, first nine games to be one off, if not the best goalkeeper in the Premier League, in my opinion, the best. Um, you, I don't have high enough praise for uh, for Vicario because I think he's just been unbelievable. And in those moments where the ball does get past Romero and Van de Ven, he's there every single time. Yeah, and that shows with his uh, save percentage, 84%, which is the best in the Premier League. And that is so crucial when you play the way that we do because, as you say, we're going to be conceding chances. And that makes it even more crucial. That it's, like, it's almost like, in a way, every save is a bit like a goal in a way. Because... <laughs> because because you're the ones dominating possession, right? And it means that when, if you do concede chances, a lot of the time they are going to be good, good, good quality chances and they're going to be good opportunities to the opposition to score. So the amount, the more times that you can stop those, when, they, when those good quality chances happen, the more times you stop them, that's going to put even more pressure on the opposition because you're going to go back to being in control and creating the chances. So it's almost like those big saves can be as good as a goal sometimes when it, when it comes to Vicario. And yesterday, that save from Paulinha, I mean, I don't think in real time time it does it justice because I think if you look at the replay he almost has to claw it from behind him it's almost behind him yeah. um, almost past him uh, with that header it was a brilliant header from Paulini you've got to give him credit for that but I, don't, I, don't, I think he thought he scored as well but it was an unbelievable uh, one-handed save from um, Vicario and it's uh, adding to a long list of um, um, good saves he's been making so far this season and he's been unbelievable um, since the first day of the season and he's been getting better and better each week and I don't think we can ask, ask for much more from him to be honest because he's just been sensational when called upon and it's so crucial that he makes those big saves or those big times because that's what's enabling us to maintain control, control of, the, of the game a lot of the time and also it's very important when oppositions are, could potentially create good opportunities if he makes those big saves it just gives us even more opportunity to go and, and increase the pressure on the opposition. And we, we wax lyrical about James Madison every week, um, and rightly so. Um, but we also have to wax lyrical, who we have been waxing lyrical about all season. But again, yesterday, Hung Min Son. Mm -hmm. um, so clinical, uh, goal and assist yesterday, captain's performance. His link up with James Madison is just so good. Uh, those little touches and flicks that he does uh, throughout the game. I feel like game by game, he is growing even more into this number nine role. 100% and he's a big part I like everyone talk about how Madison has stepped in uh, in Kane's absence but I think in terms of goal scoring I don't think we could ask for much more from him he's on seven goals in nine games eight goal contributions after his assist yesterday as well only two so, behind Haaland two behind Haaland he's really stepping up and we know we've been saying it all season when you get Son in those positions he is the best finisher in the Premier League bar none and I think again he proved it um, with that finish what a you, you just know when he gets to that position as soon as he got that yard you know it's finding the corner there's no doubt in your mind that when he gets that shot off he's as clinical as anyone and kind of substitute it's like we've t basically taken away uh, Kane out of the team and you've got Kane's finishing in Son and you've got Kane's creativity in Madison, Madison there and we've kind of made up for it in that way and I think 
Son is, uh, as a, as a central striker is really showing what what he's all around, all about um, th- this season. We know he's played that role before, but I really feel like he's it's becoming his best position, like uh, undoubtedly now mm-hmm. being in that being in that striker position. Um, I think a lot of people had doubts about you know when, when he plays up front, um, can, can he handle it against more physical defenders, all that kind of stuff. But he's definitely been adapting his game. He's been making more more smarter runs in tighter spaces. For example, that right that that chance. He had um, right at the beginning of the game where Madison plays a lovely through ball to him and he's one on one and he couldn't quite get the finish off. Those kind of things, those little pockets of space, he's starting to find a lot more. Whereas maybe in previous seasons, if he did play up front, he would struggle to find them against uh, organized defenses. And that goes to show for me that he's really adapting to this striker position. And if he if you've got a finish like Son and then he's adding things to his game, like those little layoffs like he was doing yesterday, not only just for the Madison goal, which was a really good assist, but how many times the, the ball gets fizzed into Son, he's just doing a little touch off to, a, to a, um, a teammate and allowing them to progress the ball. Those little things are things that I was really um, maybe worried about when it comes to Son in the forward line. Like, is his build up play going to be good enough? Is he going to be able to hold up the ball and bring other players into play like maybe Kane was able to do? Getting better and better all but the time. Yeah. 100% and he's really pro- uh, showing that he can step up and do this role for the team obviously I'm, he's not going to be able to like you know out muscle defenders and chest the ball down like Kane does and hold off uh, players in that way he's stronger than people give him credit for though yeah he's look, look he's not weak he's not weak but he's obviously not like um, he's not like Kane's strength but he's doing things in a smarter way in a different way and he's just playing to his own strengths yeah absolutely and I do worry though like if him or Madison do get injured because I think we lose a lot if uh, if either one of them go off, to be honest, Madison, mm. like you said before, is the hub of the whole team. And and can we can we win games? Can we score goals without Madison in the team? Can we win games and score goals without Sonny in the team? I question it. Yeah, I mean that they them two are the real quality when it comes to like putting the ball in the back of the net and then creating chances. We know that. So without them in the team, um, it would be an adjustment. I think the way we play. If we had, if let's say they both were out for an extended period of time, I don't think it would be a case of, oh, we just wouldn't score for months. I don't think that would be the case. I think we would have enough quality to be able to get goals. But it's, but I think, right, I think they have supreme ability. They're two of the best in the league, not just in the Tottenham team. They're two of the best in the league at what they do. No, there's not many better number 10s in the league than Madison. There's no better finisher, in my opinion, in the league than Human Son. So obviously, taking that quality out of the team would be a massive downgrade. But with people like Brennan Johnson or LaCelso to fill in in those, in those kind of situations. I do think we have players who could get us goals or, or, or provide us chances, maybe not to the level of um, Son and Madison, but definitely to a decent level to, to keep us competitive and keep us in a situation where we, we it doesn't mean we have to go into these games thinking how we're going to score. I still think we'll have goals in this team, but obviously they're the two in the best. You can say about, you know, uh, uh, our City is good when they don't have De Bruyne. I would probably say no, but they're still a good team, you know? I mean so I don't I don't think it's as um as warranted for Man City as it is for Spurs because you see with Man City without De Bruyne I think Rodri is the one um which really makes them lacking uh, to, to perform as a team but you see De Bruyne has been out and then they won their first what six games uh Man City and yeah. they're scoring goals I mean but I don't think I they're think as good Mad- without him yeah, fine. Not as good, fine. But I don't think it has as much of an impact as if Madison that, was out for Spurs. That's my... No, I see. We don't know that yet. We don't know. We haven't seen it. That's my opinion, what I think would happen. Yeah, maybe. Uh, but I still think we can win games without Madison. Mm-hmm. I don't think I don't think we're relying on him to win games. But at the moment, when he's playing, I think we, are, we look to him 100% and he's the hub of the team and he's that good. You can look to him. But a bit like how when Kane came out, other players stepped up. Maybe when Madison comes out, maybe other players will step mm-hmm. up, like Lacelso or whatever. I'd like to so, see Kulisevsky maybe maybe Kulisevsky that we have so we have options it's not like we have no one so um yes I would be massively concerned if Madison or Son picked up long-term injury don't get me wrong but I do think we have options there not to be uh thinking like the world's ending if 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 it happens yeah the world definitely won't be ending that's for sure (laughs) um but in terms of some other players I want to talk about Pierre Mahoybier came in um for, Mad- for the suspended Madison yesterday. In my opinion, he was one of the best players on the pitch yesterday. I thought he put an absolutely unbelievable performance. In the post-match, um, when I called into the fan show yesterday, I said he was my man in the match. But on reflection, I'm going to give it to Madison because I just thought Madison was just um, insane yesterday. Um, everything that he did was to such a high level. But 
with uh, Hoybier yesterday, the way he was just controlling that midfield, spraying the ball around um, right and left. I mean, the number of long balls that he did yesterday, I think the stat was like four out of his five long balls were um, successful yesterday. And I felt like he does that to ev- to an even better level than what Basuma has been doing it uh, for pretty much all season. But what we kind of lose with Hoybier that we don't, uh, than we have with Basuma is the way to drive through that center of the park with that dribbling ability. So I- I'm by no stretch of the imagination do I think Pierre should be starting a- ahead of Basuma. But what he did yesterday was such a good work for the team, uh, helped us get that second goal as well, uh, winning it in the middle of the park, being aggressive. Um, and I think it shows that, yes, with Bas- that we can play without Basuma. I think, I mean, Hoibier is a good player. We know he's a good player. And even though we didn't have Basuma, we know that Hoibier is good enough to come in in a game like this against a, a Fulham at home and be more than good enough to step in and, and be part of the team to win us a game. And we know he's a good player. Uh, albeit, is he a player that, uh, you know, do we have question marks whether he's perfect for what we want to do under Postacoglu? I think those question marks here, especially against better teams, are still there in my opinion. But... Look, I got no complaints about him yesterday. I think he does things in a different way to Basuma. He's a different player. He doesn't have the qualities that Basuma does when it comes to dribbling ability, press resistance. So what he has to do is use his passing range. And he obviously defensively, at times he can be just as good as Basuma in the number six, especially against a team like Fulham. He can definitely be just as dominant in that faction of the game. We know he's a very combative midfielder who can um, do a lot of stuff off the ball. But on the ball... Uh, he as whereas Basuma will look to drive and open up the space with uh, with a dribble cutting right through the heart of a, of a midfield. Hoybier will look to use his progressive passing to open up the game, and that's how he he does things. And so you can use both methods are equally viable. Uh, when when Ange um, had uh, when Ange was at Celtic, he had who was it in the centre? McGregor, Callum McGregor was it? Callum McGregor, yeah. No, so he was more of a passer. He wasn't a guy like Basuma who liked to dribble. Basuma is a, a very unique player. Not many players in um, the Premier League have what Basuma can do. It's very rare to find that and someone to do it as good as Basuma. So obviously, Ange's system doesn't rely on having someone like Basuma who with that rare skill set. He didn't... Basuma, the fact that Basuma can do what he do is just a bonus. It's just an added to what the f- system can do under Postacoglu. So when you have a functional player like Hoibier, of course he can play that role. Of course he can come in and do the role of a number six in a Postacoglu system because Postacoglu system doesn't rely on Basuma's dribbling ability. The number six has to have the job of breaking up play and then progressing the ball whatever way th- is best for that player. Now Basuma's way is driving through the heart of the midfield with his dribbling. But w- with Hoibier... It's with his passing ability, and we know he's got good a, a good passing range. Uh, last even last season, he showed it. So it's no surprise to me that he showed it yesterday. And 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 let's be honest. I know Paulinha is a very good player, and I actually think Paulinha had a great game yesterday. But it uh, Spurs will have to have a test if Hoybier came into a game against a better team. You know, we'll see how he do- does. But he did brilliant yesterday, and I was absolutely delighted. And um, it shows that we've got good strength and depth in that position. Yeah, that's, yeah. Midfield is is definitely our most stocked position. I think we're we're blessed with the options that we have there. Pape Matasar again. I thought had a really good. Uh, first half anyway I thought first half he was absolutely everywhere um, second half he did kind of diminish out the game and got taken off on the hour mark um, Richarlison I thought as well was very involved in that first half but again in the second half he did go a bit missing I don't know if that was down to him or maybe um, what you were saying with Spurs just keep trying to go direct and and um, and not play the football that we were playing in the first half do you think that had to do with maybe Richarlison diminishing out the game? Potentially, he had that one chance, didn't he, which he skied out over the bar in that, yeah. in that second half, which I think Son laid it on for him. But other than that, he was a bit anonymous. First half, I was pretty happy with him. I thought he was linking up really well with the dogie. He was um, actually uh, part of the, some of the free-flowing uh, footballing moves that we were capable of in that first half. And obviously, he got a really crucial assist for the first goal which was a um, really nice pass into humans on quick thinking as well he had to react quickly to that interception from van de ven and um that allowed us to get the first goal and i think to be fair to him i think his form ha- i've been saying it, i think his form has been improving slightly over the past few weeks i think he's slowly building up his confidence back i know lot um 
just before the international break against Luton, he maybe didn't have his best half and missed a few chances. But the one thing about Richarlison, which I maybe do, it doesn't, it goes under the radar, but is is just getting more involved in things. In the in the first in the first few games of the season, my biggest criticism of Richarlison wasn't that he was missing chances or that he was um or or that um his quality wasn't good enough in front of goal anyway. My biggest criticism was he was just anonymous. He wasn't getting involved in the game. He wasn't getting on the ball. He wasn't being threatening. And now he's doing those things. Do you feel like his his position change out to the left wing has enabled that potentially maybe being under less pressure from you know center backs up your backside and stuff like that maybe that is helping him having just having that breathing space out wide to maybe take people on and um maybe not having the pressure of being the focal point has helped him a bit and we know he can play on the left hand side everyone ke- everyone has kept saying for ever since he's come to Tottenham that he's a number nine he can't play on the wing um and when, whenever he's played out wide everyone's saying oh the reason he's playing badly is he's played out position he's playing up front he's a different player I've always thought in my opinion some of his best games for Everton were always on the left I always thought um I felt like in fact when he first came to Everton he was a left winger and he only started playing up front because they had injuries and he the reason why he kept his position is because he was so playing so well in the forward line that they just kept him up front but he was actually more generally uh, uh, I, was, I wouldn't say a left wing above more of a left forward I would say at uh, Everton and that's where I thought he a lot of his be- better performances came from um, and I think when it comes to him being a striker he can do that role but he's more of a penalty box striker he's not one who gets really involved in the in the build up play he's one who's a bit of a nuisance he likes to close people down he's a really hard worker but his general play when it comes to holding the ball up keeping the ball away from center backs and stuff like that i've never really been a massive fan of i think he's pretty good when you get crossed in the box and he, his finishing can be can be good at heading as well that's where his strengths lie but when we're playing the way we we want to play i think him being on the left does make a bit more sense and it can means he does get a bit more time on the ball maybe he can take people on a bit more which maybe he wants to um i don't think he's the best chance creator but he has been getting more assists and so maybe that's something he's getting better at um uh, as the games go on so I think Richarlison's improving I'm not saying he's setting the world light or anything I don't think he's been incredible over I the last few games I think first half was probably his best 45 minute period of the season potentially yeah I, I think I can agree with that I don't think he was like un, I like a lot of I'm seeing him getting a lot of praise and I'm happy for him because I'm, I think the better the better he does he deserves praise I don't think he's been absolutely amazing I wouldn't say he's been getting 8 to 9s out of 10s um, uh, uh, the last few weeks but what I would say is in the beginning of the season he was getting maybe 3s and 4s and now he's getting you know 7 and eights potentially so it's a big improvement yeah it feels like he's he's getting acclimatized to this team um like week by week he is getting better and, and that's all we can ask from for Richarlison is to keep improving keep getting better and I think he's doing that so credit to him uh but let's finish off talking about Kulisevsky I've, I'm seeing a lot of kind of um words about Kulisevsky's performance yesterday about his lack of end product once again um I do think he did good work for the team as he always does uh, with his ball retention and and trying to get the ball high up the pitch and create but I, I did feel like his um, his end product was a bit poor yesterday yeah it was again um, I thought when he had to make a pass I thought he was decent he set up a, a chance for a charlatan he set up another one for Son as well um, I thought he was I thought when he got to the byline he was asked to create an opportunity he did okay but for some reason he just really doesn't want to shoot and I don't understand why um, he's so reluctant to shoot in really good positions. A couple of occasions, there was one where Romero plays that lovely through ball to him and he's on his left foot, cutting inside. You're thinking, I know there are players in front of him, but you're thinking perfect opportunity to maybe just get a shot off and get a shot on target and could even got a goal. And he decides to lay off for Son in a probably he was in a worse position and the chance goes begging. He had another opportunity in, in the second half where uh, it was on the edge of the box. He cuts inside, doesn't have too many players in front of him, perfect angle to shoot and he hesitates and he makes for the pass so um, I don't I think he's got a good shot on him and I don't know why he doesn't have the confidence in himself to make more use of it um, I would say when he has been shooting this season uh, his shooting boots haven't been there his shoots his shots have been a bit weak but I've seen him uh, take really good shots in his Spurs career and I've seen uh, what he's capable Especially of for his Spurs career yeah, and yeah, I've seen what he's capable of so I don't understand what's going on with him when it comes to that lack of uh just taking those opportunities or trying shots. But when it comes to, yeah, his dribbling ability, ball retention on that right-hand side, getting into the penalty box, which, you know, has been a consistent theme for Kuliseski this season, he's still doing a stellar job. And I thought Robertson uh, found it really tough to deal with him yesterday. So as much as, again, we want improvement, I'm still pretty happy with him. Mm. 
All right, so there you have it. That is our match review from Spurs to Fulham nil at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. Spurs go two points clear at the top of the league and have the chance to go five points clear this weekend as Spurs do kick off the Premier League weekend Friday night at Selhurst Park. But thank you everyone for joining the match review.